David Harris here with Protection Dog Cells, and today we're shooting a little educational video, maybe a little Mythbusters style of conversation about something that I'm frequently asked about, attack on command. What the heck is attack on command? Do we want a dog that attacks on command? So once again, there's a lot of different genres of protection dog training. There's sport dog training, there's military dog training, there's police dog training, and then there's what we do, which is personal protection dogs. These are dogs that, that go out into public with people, encounter all manner of distraction, all manner of, of situations that you may or may not have 100% control over. So attack on command is not exactly something that a personal protection dog would do. I don't really believe any dog should do attack on command. I mean, what does that mean even when you think it, break it down? Does it mean that the dog won't attack if there's no command? What if the guy's sneaking up from behind me and I don't see him? Wouldn't I want my dog to protect me? So one of the things that makes dogs valuable and have been companions to humans for 15, 20,000 years is their ability to hear better, see better, smell better. So a dog knows a threat based on a lot of information that he gets that we don't get. We can't see the subtle things that he sees in a person's movements. We can't smell the things that he smells. Unless a person is truly psychotic, when they're doing something wrong, they smell like they're doing something wrong. And it's blaring smell. It's just like 9-11, boom, boom, boom. The smell is just blasting out of this person's body. And the dog will detect that way before you would even imagine it, okay? So a dog's ability to hear better, see better, smell better makes him perfectly suited for the role of guardian and personal protection dog. So attack on command is not a necessary thing and we're gonna do some demonstrations today to let you see with your own eyes, your limited vision and your limited ability to process this type of information what the dog is sensing that makes him become protective over you and your family. So, once again, there is really no such thing as attack on command. Imagine a dog that would attack someone for no reason. That makes absolutely no sense. The per person's being passive and you tell your dog to attack that a normal, well-raised, well-socialized, genetically confident dog is not going to do that. A defensive, fearful, uh, a dog that's been hurt and taught, if you don't bite first, you're going to get hurt. That dog is not the kind of dog you need to be looking at. So anyone who is selling or pushing attack on command, that's someone you need to uh, walk away from. Okay, so we're going to do a little demonstration here for you and let you see some of the components of attack on command, fact or fiction. Look at this beautiful woman with this gorgeous smile on her face and gorgeous dog. How are you doing today, gorgeous? Hey, Eric approaching the dog in a non-threatening manner. There's no threat here and the dog can see that. The, po the posture, the facial expression, the tone, the smell, none of the threat signals are there and the dog is not gonna react. Huh? You know, protection's a good thing to have in this world. Hey, look at you. Oh, you're so good. So nice, pretty. In our training, we have to be able to play the good guy and we have to be able to play the bad guy. And I think what you're gonna see in this video is a visual representation of, of how the dog can pick up on such subtle cues. So protection dog, does that mean, what, he just attacks people? No, not really. Will he bum rush me? No. He, he won't? Nope. Can we try? Sure. Attack! Get him! Get him! He looks dumbfounded. Attack! Could I pet him again? Yeah, you can He's pet him again. Hey. He's very friendly. Hey. Oh my gosh. You remind me of this poodle I had. Hey. Hi. People that are non-threatening act non-threatening. People that are threatening act threatening and the dog is innately able to distinguish that. So the attack on command is just silliness. We don't need such a thing. The dog has instincts, he has confidence, he understands what a threat looks like. So he just doesn't attack anybody but he's still a protection dog. He is a protection dog. What about that? Yeah. And now we're going to flip the switch. I think you've shown me your dog. No he was problem. so obedient. Oh jeez. And this is where the helper has to get inside of his own head and he has to bring out his own uh, ability to conjure up that threat that's going to be brought at this person. And it's real. He feels it, he's thinking it, and you should be able to see it. I really could use 20 bucks though. Hey, I forgot to mention my car's broke down 
and I'm having a really hard time getting my taxes paid. Do you have like 20 bucks you could spare? I don't have any money. You I'm don't sorry. have any money. I don't have any at all. Just a little bit. No, I don't have any. What about money. Isler? He's doing tricks. Can we do tricks on the corner? For no, I, I don't think so. No? no, I don't think so. Oh, come on, Isler. We were just hugging. We were just hugging. No, we were just hugging. I'm gonna try a hug now. I can't try a hug now. Okay, summing this uh, fact or fiction about Attack on Command, I think what you've been able to see represented here is a dog doesn't need an attack on command. And a dog that would attack on command is mentally unbalanced. There's absolutely no possible reason that a personal protection dog would attack someone who's being non-threatening.